Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn here with a setup guide on the Deep Cool Mystique 360 ARGB all in one cooler, which I'm going to show you how to set up with an AMD build. And you can see it here inside a dark flash case, top mounted. But I'm also going to show you later on in the video how to swap the fans out on the radiator so that you can make them match the fans in your case. I'm using Corsair IQ Link fans here for demonstration purposes. In this build, I'm going to show you how to install the cooler, what's included in the box where all the wires plug in, and a lot more besides. Now this is actually a very nice cooler in a number of ways. Obviously you've seen a large pump and display on the top, and also has ARGB fans, but the wiring is fairly straightforward, meaning you can connect up pretty easily to the motherboard and control it that way, and use Deepcool software to control the display as well. And I'll link to those things in the description so you can find out more about that. But you can see that it has this large, pump head here with pre-applied thermal paste on it so you don't need to worry about thermal paste. A number of cables coming out of it that I'm going to show you how to wire and where to connect those up and explain which does what and why you need to connect them. You can see them laid out here with each of the individual cables on display but I'm also going to talk you through them individually as we go through this so you can get a clear idea of how this thing connects up because you've got cables that come out of the pump but also out of the fans which we'll get to in a little while. There's obviously also included accessories for both Intel and AMD socket motherboards, different brackets that you need to use and more. In this video, I'm focusing on AMD AM5 platform, and I'll leave the specs of the build in the description so you can find out more about it. But obviously, there'll also be a manual included if you want to do an Intel build. But here you can see we've got a number of different things, including standoffs we need to install on the motherboard, screws to secure the bracket to the cooler itself, standoffs for Intel as well for 1700 socket motherboards and others. We've got long radiator screws to install the fans to the radiator, additional screws to secure it to the case, another cable set up with multiple cables that we connected to the fans and then to your motherboard. And then you can see everything laid out here that's included in the box. We don't need all of these things. So if we remove all the Intel things, you can see this is what we end up with. These are what you're going to need for an AM5 socket setup. So it's not as complicated and quite as scary that way. In order to get this set up, first of all, you need to remove the plastic cap and then start securing these brackets. There's four small screws used to secure the AM5 bracket to the pump head. Obviously, you'd secure the Intel ones if you're using the other option and you'll see the difference between them. But this is a fairly easy installation process and you do need to do this during the prep. But you do need to take care as well not to damage the thermal paste because obviously we've taken that plastic cap off. You don't want to damage that paste in a way that would remove any of it or leave any marks on there because then that will affect the cooling performance of it. So once it's all screwed back together and you've got all four screws secured in those corners, I'd recommend putting the plastic cap back over the top. Take care with it. Obviously, you need to remove that before you go about the final installation step but just to protect that thermal paste for now stick that back on now you can see the fans already come pre-installed on the radiator you'll note that they're set up for exhaust so they're face down into the case they'll be pulling air through and pushing it out the top of the case in this build so if you want them as intake instead you have to unscrew them flip them over and put them the other way around in order to do that now what you can see is we then have this cable which has three connectors on one end and two on the other. This plugs into each of the fans, so each fan has a little socket in it and the cable plugs into that and then it runs along to the next fan and then to the next fan. And you plug in each of these and as you can see they've got plastic clips on them so you can only plug these cables in one way. This cable carries the fan power signal and the RGB signals from the couple of connectors on the end, which will then be controllable by your motherboard software or by something like Signal RGB. So you'll need to connect these up. Obviously, fan power connection and RGB connection. I recommend connecting to the CPU fan header for the fan power and then a 5 volt 3 pin connector, which I'll show you in a second. Now obviously we need to make sure our CPU is installed, so we're using an AM5 socket here with the Ryzen 7 7700X as an example. You lift the little latch up, put the CPU in carefully into the socket, put the thing back down, secure it carefully, and then we need to go about the process of removing the pre-installed standoffs which come with the motherboard itself. These are held in place by a couple of screws 
at the top and bottom and you need to remove those plastic clips and get them out of the way. We're not going to be using these but I would recommend putting them in your motherboard box or somewhere safe so you don't lose them. You might want to use them in future for something else. And then you need the little standoffs so you can see we've got these little standoffs that screw into the holes on the motherboard with the black plastic sitting at the bottom and then they're jutting up into the air. This is going to then allow you to seat the cooler down over the top, secure it down with screws and put it down in a way which will then hopefully cool the CPU down nicely when fully secured. So it's worth doing this prep beforehand while the motherboard's out of the case. It just makes it a little bit easier. Then, as I said, just to make it clear, the fan power cable plugs into the CPU fan header, which you can see here is in the top right hand side of the motherboard. So you'd plug that in up there make sure you watch for the labeling carefully because you can see i actually plugged it into the wrong spot there but then the 5 volt rgb connection is on the right hand side on this motherboard it's looking for a three pin connector which usually says something like argb on it you want to plug the connector into that so that you can then control the rgb lighting now the pump head also has its own cable there's a small cable here which you can see which then connects up to the AIO pump header. So this way, the pump itself is controlled by your motherboard via the AIO pump header, which you can see here. And then the fans are controlled by the CPU fan header. So your motherboard has full control over the cooling of the coolant inside the radiator because the fans will spin up faster to cool that down. And obviously the pump's controlled by the motherboard as well. The pump head then has two extra cables, which are five volt connections. So you can see you've got a male and a female version of these. Now you have options here. If you've got another three pin five volt RGB head on your motherboard, you can plug into that. Alternatively, you can take the one that runs from the fans and plug that into the male connector from the pump head. And then you plug the female version of that connector into the 5 volt connection that I just unplugged it from and that way the pump head and the fans are basically chained together and then plugged into the RGB connection on the motherboard so this means you can control it easily with the motherboard software but as I said if it's easier you can use multiple 5 volt RGB headers on the motherboard you might find there's one down the bottom of the motherboard that's easier to connect to if you'd like so you have options in how you do this but basically it's a female and male connection you can see the pins here. You have to just slot them into place. It's a little bit fiddly, but it is possible to chain these things together and so fairly easy. So now I've done that, I'm going to show you how to set it up once it's actually installed in the build, because obviously that was outside the case just to show you the logical wiring of it. So once the motherboard's seated inside and everything else is wired up and installed, now we're going to go about the process of installing the all-in-one cooler. Now, as mentioned, I'm top mounting it in this instance. I actually have found in some cases it's better to side mount your all-in-one cooler as intake but for longevity top mounting it will actually make the cooler last longer and so this is a fairly easy way to do it and it's already set up like this so you just put it on the top of the case secure it with the little screws that are included with the cooler in multiple positions along there because there's loads of different screw holes that you need to line up and screw in so you're just securing it there fairly easily. Note a couple of other important things here. I've got the tubes in the right hand side and the wires for the fans are at the back as a result of that. If you wanted to have it the other way around you'd have to consider moving the fans around, turning them around because otherwise those cables will be visible. We've obviously also got a lot of other cables to deal with as you can see from the pump itself which we'll need to tidy up in a minute. So don't forget at this stage we need to remove the plastic cap to expose the thermal paste so that that will make good contact with the CPU. Now we're going to seat it down over the standoffs that we pre-installed earlier on and then we'll use the thumb screws that are included to secure that over the top of that. So there's four little screw setups here that you need to just secure in and I would recommend doing it by hand to start with, corner to corner, bottom to top, across so you've got good tension there and then use a screwdriver to fully tighten it up. So what you want to do is basically just screw these on until they stop tightening. Don't force it. We need to make sure they're well secured so that there's good contact between the CPU and the cooler to ensure that it gives you good cooling performance. Then we've got to deal with all these cables, which are a little bit of a mess, as you can see. As a reminder, don't forget to plug in the AIO pump header connection from the pump itself onto the top right of the motherboard to make sure that the pump is recognized by the system and controllable that way as well. You want to do that so the motherboard can see it. 
and then we've got to deal with all these other cables. So what I've done here is to use plastic cable ties across the here for in multiple positions. Because of the way that it's coming out of the cooler in this instance, obviously it could be a little bit messy if you don't do this. So if you have them, I'd recommend using these. I just used uh, several of them along the collection of wires because these wires are all going to run to the back to allow us to neaten them up and maybe hide away the majority of how visible they are while running them through to the rear. So it's going to vary from case to case, but this is what I'd recommend doing. And then you can see once that's done, it's looking a little bit tidier. And then I've just got to push those cables through to the rear. This is just to get them out of the way. Obviously, some of them still need to be connected to the motherboard, as I'll show you in a second. A USB connection, for example, needs to be plugged in and other things but you can see that looks a lot nicer now and won't be as visible. So one of the first connections we have to do is SATA power and then USB connection as well. SATA power uses the same cable that you use for your hard disk drives and SSDs. So this is the cable that you would have got with your power supply unit and hopefully you've got a spare one because as you'll see with this cable you have multiple connections on it. I'm using a Corsair RM Shift power supply for demonstration purposes here but you'll find the same thing across modular power supplies. You have a connector that plugs into your hard drive and SSD and then multiple spare connectors on that same cable. And what you'll find is you can only plug this cable in one way, but it is essential because it will power the device properly to make sure it's running. And the other thing that you'll need is the USB connection. This USB connection allows you to use deep cool software, which you download separately once everything's installed to be able to change the display on the system. You should find a USB connection one or two bottom middle of your motherboard marked as USB and this cable is missing a pin so you can only plug it in one way so it's pretty easy to install in the system. Then don't forget that we have those connections from the fans as well so the FIFA RGB connector and the CPU fan connection. You can see that I've run the cable to the back to hide away the majority of it and then run it back through to the front so that I can then plug it in and the top right as I showed earlier on. So just as a reminder, one part of this, the fan power part of it, goes into the CPU fan header. Make sure you use the right port for this, which is the far left setup on this motherboard. I actually plugged it into the wrong spot again there. <laughs> Pay attention to what you're doing. And then the 5 volt RGB connector either connects up to the daisy chain connection from the pump, as you've seen, with the male and female connections here, or directly to the motherboard as I just showed you. So you have the option to choose what you want to do here, what works best in your case and in your build. But perhaps the easiest one to do is to chain those two together. So you end up with just one connector that you then need to plug in. So that's fairly straightforward that way. And it's ideal if you've got a motherboard that maybe only has one connection or needs to plug in at the bottom of the motherboard, because some motherboards only have these connectors down the bottom. And then you should find that you've got a finished system, at least in terms of the cooler, and that it turns on nicely. You'll notice the display doesn't immediately show you data about the cooler and the CPU. That's because you need to download the software first. So you need to get into Windows for it and to be able to tweak that so you can then adjust it. But that's what it looks like in this build. Now, obviously, I'm using a black cooler with black fans in a white case, which might not please everybody. But the point of this was to be able to show you how to set this up, how to install it in your system. Obviously, you could do this in a black case just as easily. But you can see it looks fairly neat once you've dealt with the cables and plugged everything in. And then when you get into Windows, download the deep cool software. I'd recommend running some tests to make sure your temperatures are decent. You get a good thermal performance out of it and you're not seeing the temps getting too high. So using something like 3D Mark or Cinebench to run tests and stress tests is worthwhile. Now, if you want to swap the fans on this cooler with other fans to make them match throughout your case, then you can do that too. And it's fairly straightforward. So I want to show you with Corsair's IQ Link fans but the logic will be the same for other fans as well. What I'm doing here is basically putting IQ Link fans throughout. So I want to be able to put them on the radiator to make it look nice. Now, obviously, what you need to do is to, first of all, remove the deep cool fans as they're installed as standard. So take the radiator screws out and then we're going to just swap the Corsair fans into their place. Now, you can use this logic 
with any other fans. So you can make them match with Lee and Lee fans, for example, if you wanted to. What I'd recommend is just removing these, making sure of a few different things as you do it. One, that you put the new fans on in the same direction if you're planning on exhausting through the top. Two, you make sure you watch out for any connectors on the fans, that the pump tubes aren't going to be blocking them. So you can see here, for example, when I put the fans down there, the tubes might be getting in the way of those connectors. And then obviously reusing the radiator screws to reinstall it onto the, the radiator. Of course, this IQ link system is pretty straightforward to set up and beneficial because what you're doing here is basically putting a connector on one end of the group of fans rather than multiple cables. And that then runs to other IQ link fans and then you can connect them up with a controller and I'll leave a link in the description to my full wiring guide on IQ link system so you can see that but it does make it pretty straightforward if alternatively you're using other fans which have fan power cables coming out of each fan then you'll probably want to consider using a splitter and connect them to the CPU fan header as I did with the deep cool fans so that they're still controlled by the motherboard that way and you can get triple splitters that you can then use on the CPU fan header pretty easily with most fans. But here you can see basically I've got all of these IQ Link fans wired together from one group of fans to the next, to the next, to the next, and then it goes through the back to the controller. What you might find is when you power on your system that you get a warning about the CPU fan speed not being recognized if you aren't using the CPU fan header. So if for any reason you aren't plugging fans into that CPU fan header, you can then go into the advanced mode on your BIOS and turn that off so it's not monitoring it anymore. Now, this will be the case if, for example, you're using Corsair's IQ Link fans or if you're using a different fan controller that doesn't connect to the CPU fan header. Sometimes the motherboard can complain about this, but you can see under the speed monitoring, we just turn it to ignore so you don't need to worry about that and that will allow your system to boot properly. And then you should find that you've got a nice looking setup with a bit more aesthetically pleasing, perhaps. As mentioned, I've got links in the description, which will hopefully help with a bit more detail on wiring IQ link fans and things like that and doing push pull setups if you're interested. But hopefully this has been useful. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.